Good morning, John. How's How it going? Are you? Uh, so what weapon are we going to talk about today? So we're going to take a look at a couple of anti-tank weapons today. Uh, we're going to start with some old stuff and move to uh, present day. Oh, wow. So okay. let's, uh, let's get the table set up and uh, we'll, we'll get rolling on this. we Will do. Okay. There we go. All right. Cool. All right, come on. All right, so I'm going to give you a quick and dirty rundown of American rocket uh, anti-tank weapons. Okay. Uh, the first one, unfortunately, we don't have here because it's on, on display in the museum, but that would be the M1 bazooka, circa about 1942, and it was uh, fired a, a rocket, um, two-man crew, gunner, loader, basically uh, to, you had to get close to a tank, and uh, you could kill it, uh, mobility kill or, or penetrate the armor on the rear or on the sides. Uh, the second model we had was the M9 bazooka, also during World War II. Um, this was basically an improvement because you could take the tube apart into two pieces and it was a little, little more portable. Um, fairly effective weapon system, um, but again, you had to get close to your target to kill uh, it. Okay. After World War II, or right at the end of World War II, we came out with the M20, which was a much bigger weapon, basically the same design. So here you're looking at 2.36 inches in diameter for the rocket. Here you're looking at three and a half. Uh, so bigger rocket, bigger warhead. Uh, better range, uh, but it was a big bulky system. It separated into two parts like the, uh, the M9 too, but it was still pretty heavy uh, for, for a bazooka gunner to lug around. So in the early 60s, we, uh, the Army and the, and the Marines decided that we needed a replacement system. Something light, something easy that, that a soldier or a Marine could carry on their ruck and uh, use when needed. And we came out with the M72 Law. Uh, in fact, this one right here is one of the prototypes. This is an XM72. and uh, the law was basically, you know, man portable. It was came preloaded, so you didn't even need to worry about a second uh, crewman um, and point and shoot uh, at a target. Um, the uh, the system was actually in service from the early '60s through probably the early '90s. Went out of production in 1983, but it was so desirable and, and, and effective in its role that the Marines actually put them back into production in, in 2011. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, so really uh, long serving great system. Okay. Uh, and it was so good, in fact, that the Russians copied it here with the RPG-22. But by the uh, mid-70s, the Army and the Marines wanted to replace it with something different. And so they came out with the FGR-17 Viper. Um, this one's serial number one. Uh, and this was a prototype that didn't really go anywhere. Um, it wasn't powerful enough and it didn't offer uh, much of an advantage over the uh, M72. Uh, but what that led to was a competition in the early 80s for the next generation weapon system. Uh, the winner of that was the AT4 or the M136. Uh, here we have an XM136 prototype and then two of the service rounds here. Uh, and that's what's been carried by our soldiers and Marines since, uh, since uh, pretty much about 1989. Oh wow, okay. Um, but all of these weapons so far have been point and shoot rockets. Mm -hmm. uh, difference between a rocket and a missile is a guidance system. So these, these are all unguided, point and shoot, you gotta get close to your target, mm -hmm. dangerous for the, uh, for the Marines on the ground. So in the late 90s, there was a new system designed that was adopted you know, by about 99, uh, and that's the FG, uh, FGM 148 Javelin. Where, where's the javelin? So that's this system right here, and uh, tell you what, we'll, let's pick it up. We'll move it up to the table, and we'll talk about it up there. Okay. So, can you tell me a little bit of uh, the history about this weapon, and you know the significance, and you know why was it so important to the military and even the Marine Corps? Okay, so the javelin was was like I said, it was adopted in the late '90s. Uh, Marines started carrying them in the field uh, by about 2002. Mm -hmm. Um, and this particular weapon actually was, uh, was in Afghanistan in 2012. Uh, we've been able to trace its provenance. And it was at uh, camp, it arrived at Camp Leatherneck in uh, August of 2012 and was there uh, for about a year before it was shipped back home. Um, so um, this really gave the Marines uh, at, at uh, Camp Leatherneck a great ability to see around them, uh, around, around the base because of the, uh, the infrared system on mm -hmm. it. Uh, so it's got basically a, a, uh, an infrared camera okay. here, and you can switch to, to wide field, narrow field, excuse me, you can switch your fields of view um, 
For the target? For, well, for the target, but you can also just observe. Oh, okay. And that really, um, that ability gave our Marines at, at Camp Leatherneck a great capability to see what was out there you know, around the facility without having to, to use searchlights or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so really it was a, it was a great, uh, you know, a great system. Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons why it was so important to the military or even the Marine Corps. Sure. Because it, it was so advanced and it had so much um, property to it. It had so much to do with this weapon. It was very easy to use. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not point and shoot. It's, it's a little more complicated. Um, you've got your two grips here. Mm -hmm. Your right hand grip uh, controls your, your laser designator. Okay. Uh, you've got your laser coming out of here. And uh, it would get you your range. And then you'd lock onto your target with the, uh, the left grip, and then you've got a trigger guard on here for your, for your loud laser. Um, and uh, when you're ready to fire, you're locked on your target, pull the trigger, missile fires, and then you can bug out immediately. Because okay. that target data is, is sent from the clue to the, uh, to the missile, and once you've fired, you can get out of there. It's a fire and forget system. And you didn't need two people to man this. You can have one infantry guy man exactly. This. Exactly. That's really, really so, awesome. I mean, it's a bit heavy, but you know, it's uh, it's certainly a man portable system. Okay. Thank you, John. I do really, really appreciate this. I learned a little bit about this weapon today. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Yeah. Cool.